Okay, we are on the record in case D591112, Smith v. Anderson. Counsel. Good morning, Your Honor. Terry Doyle, bar number 10571. I'm bundled for plaintiff Mr. Smith, who is present. Okay, we have a request from Ms. Anderson to appear telephonically. So we will attempt to get her on the phone. Ms. Anderson, are you there? I am. Okay. I have uh, counsel for Mr. Smith in the courtroom, uh, Mr. Doyle, and Mr. Smith is also here. Uh, we are on the record in case D591112. <clears throat> this is the time set for Dad's motion for custody orders, child support, immediate return of the children, uh, fees and costs, and then Mom's opposition and counter motion. Um, Mom also filed an ex parte motion for a uh, um, UCC JEA telephone conference, just so you know. On uh, and this is posted in the um, in the case. I had a brief telephone conference a couple of days ago with um, the judge in Washington. Mm -hmm. um, we concluded that based upon everybody's filings, not only Dad's but also Mom's, that this court would be the court that has jurisdiction. Mom raised the issue of inconvenient forum. That wasn't really briefed, I think, the way it would need to be briefed in order for me to actually decline to exercise jurisdiction. I think she's always welcome to file that request and actually brief it properly if she thinks that she needs to do that. But she raised the issue of this is inconvenient forum, sort of saying prospectively, that's where the kids should be and that's where the family is and those kinds of things, which are really more argument about her request to live there. Right. Um, the question becomes, is it really an inconvenient forum um, under the statute. So um, at this juncture, what the judge, um, Judge Cuthbertson up in Washington said was he would defer to this court um, based on the discussion that we had briefly about the filings of the parties where they acknowledged that the children were here up until May, dad filed in June, um, so they lived here six months prior to the filing of the action. Um, um, so, with that, jurisdiction does lie in this court. Um, and then, um, we need to determine, and he said he wasn't going to exercise emergency jurisdiction at that point um, because of the fact that we had a hearing coming up. Because um, that was one of the things that he could do if he thought he, it was necessary. Um, <clears throat> so with that, um, I'll let you make your representations, counsel, and then we'll talk about what we need to do going forward. Um, Your Honor, so uh, as the court noted, and I did read the minutes from that hearing, the children have were here um, up until May. Uh, Mom fled to Washington with the children and did not, Dad was not aware. In fact, he was actually in Washington State in May for a cruise that uh, him and his girlfriend were going on. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time the children were up there, and Dad had no knowledge. Um, Mom makes a bunch of accusations in her opposition and, and her pleadings about domestic violence, but there's no evidence, and of course my, my client denies that anything like that happened. Um, there's no police reports, there's no arrests. Um, she says that her then boyfriend was also committing domestic violence. There's no information about that. And in fact, Mom was living in a home that Dad owned, um, and they had been separated for a year. So, um, I don't know, I mean, she's got the burden to prove by clear and convincing evidence that domestic violence occurred, um, just, just from the standpoint of child custody issues. Um, it doesn't really seem that she had, she meets the factors for a relocation with the children, especially in light of the fact that she didn't even ask Dad for permission to relocate. Um, well, um, you know, there is this, the statute allows if they're if they're <clears throat> trying to protect themselves from domestic violence, right. and it doesn't mean it didn't happen just because there weren't police reports. But the, my concern was more about what was being reported to the counselors by the children, relating to some incident that or, and or incidents that may have occurred in dad's home with girlfriend and with the child, um, 
I mean, I that has supposedly been, hold on one second, sorry. I'm sorry, I took a breath, and, <laughs> that has supposedly been um, reported to uh, CPS by the counselors, and I don't know whether that has happened, uh, maybe Mom can sh shed some light on that when we talk to her, but um, is Dad, does Dad have contact with the children at all? He, he has been able to talk to them via telephone, mm -hmm. or maybe Skype, or FaceTime. Yeah, FaceTime. FaceTime. You have been FaceTiming? Okay. Um, <coughs> I would, I would add though, Your Honor, my, my client has represented that he's spoken with the ex fiance the boyfriend, um, and he had informed my client that they had been planning on moving to Washington prior to this. You're talking um, about Seth, the one that she <coughs> said she ran him. Seth Caldwell, okay. Correct. And so th this plan was in the works. Obviously, mom went without Seth. Why, you know, my client doesn't know, but. This is what he's been told, and so that kind of brings some questions as to like how emergent was this move and, and those types of things. Right. Um, you know, Dad's had no prior arrests. No, Mom didn't provide any documentation showing that CPS has opened up a case. Um, anything from the counselors that indicate anything. Um, she does provide some text messages and some photos of the home, which I can address really quickly. The photos of the home. Um, I don't know if Your Honor uh, looked at them, but I was, in reading her motion, I was anticipating, oh, she's going to have some photos of, like, holes punched in the wall and things like that, but it's very clearly <coughs> demolition that's been done, and my client's telling me that the home was flooded on a couple occasions by their three-year-old son, and um, he hired a remediation company to come in because there was mold damage and those types of things to do those repairs. Um, you can see in the pictures that I mean, there's, like, perfect squares cut out in the walls and those types of things. Yeah, I see them. Um, and then with respect to the text messages um, between his girlfriend and mom, um, they got into an argument one night. I think it's pretty clear from the text messages that the that dad's girlfriend's saying, you know, this is not a police situation. Police aren't coming out. There's some discussion about um, dad hitting their son. Um, but also that the son wasn't crying. So this isn't a situation where dad's like, pummeling this child or doing anything, dad, um, dad is saying that he, he's not abusing the child, CPS wasn't called, um, dad and girlfriend got into an argument, she took the kids back to mom, and that was the end of it. Uh, mom does also make out accusations that dad was drinking and driving with the kids, um, dad denies that, he, what, what his representation of the event was, it was the same evening it kind of led up to the argument between him and his girlfriend, but he was at a friend's house. The kids were playing with his friend's kids. Dad was drinking at, at the home. His friend um, was not. Uh, he may have had like one beer or something to that effect. His friend drove him home. They believe that, that you know, it was a drinking and driving situation, but. Yeah, not only at, she, she believes it, but so does the girlfriend, right? right. But Dad's saying it's not the case. And again, there's no DUIs. There's no, I mean, there's nothing here. It's you know, I mean, just because there's no DUI doesn't mean he didn't do it. No, I understand. I, I mean, mean the cops and that that that, but. that doesn't excuse the fact that it could have happened. So um, I understand your argument, but, but even it's if it very did, concerning. Honor, even if it did, Your Honor, that incident may affect the determination as to custody. But it doesn't justify relocation. I totally understand that. I'm trying to figure out what to do in the interim. Um, what I pro what I really need to do is some um, investigation, maybe find, in, in terms of like requesting CPS records, see if there are CPS records in Washington. I'm trying to figure out how, uh, does CPS here contact them there? I think they may. Um, if we request the records here, I think they may request them up there. Yeah, I'm not, I'm sure. not certain. Um, Mom, do you by chance have any um, idea whether CPS has been contacted in Washington by the counselor? Um, <coughs> not by um, the counselor, but by my DB advocate. They also do make a call to Washington CPS. Um, but I have not heard either follow-up from Nevada CPS or Washington. So has Nevada CPS been contacted about this issue? Yes, both Washington and Nevada. Okay, 
so who contacted the Nevada CPS? Um, do you know? I mean, children's counselor. So it was the counselor here that did it. Um, the counselor in Washington made the online report to Nevada. Okay, yeah. I got you. Okay, all right. That was what I was trying to figure out. All right, so yeah. so um, I guess I can so I can request those records for sure to see if okay. they, they have pursued anything. Have you been contacted at all by CPS? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, do you have any plans to go up to Washington in the near future? Not at the moment. Are the kids in school? Um, the children start school September 4th here in Washington. Right. My daughter. Right. So she hasn't started yet. Just, where's Liz in this whole picture? She's still, this is your girlfriend, right? Yeah, that's her. She's there she is. Okay. Um... <coughs> Just what do you what do you think needs to happen, Mr. Doyle? I well, mean, I, I think the court has jurisdiction. I need to figure out. I need to send them to um, FMC. Right. Required to do that. Well, um, here's what needs. Here's what mom needs to understand. So, mom, you would have to prove to me that <clears throat> there is a basis to relocate permanently with your children. Um, the there are statutory requirements for you to do that you cannot utilize information that relates to what happened after any relocation like if you just flee the state and decide to move and then tell me oh it's really great up here um, you know kids love it that's not a basis to relocate in fact the statute prohibits it as does the case law so you would have to show me why relocation is in their best interest under the statute. Um, the question becomes, what is the interim custodial timeshare when you're waiting for a trial? If you can't sustain a relocation request, dad has the potential to, and you, and you don't really have a basis, and you try to pursue one, potentially I could order attorney's fees um, if dad has to defend a relocation request. But on the flip side, if there's domestic violence, and it's be a, and or you've you know put the children in harm's way, then there's going to be some presumptions against you that you would never be able to have joint or primary custody, and so you'd have to overcome that presumption um, before you would ever be able to sustain that. So <clears throat> there's a lot going on here, um, and my job is just to make sure the children are safe. Right at the end of the day, that's my my foremost concern is to make sure they're safe, that their best interests are, are um, taken into account, and, and what does that look like right now in the interim until I have a trial? Well, Your Honor, I understand Your Honor's concerns with the allegations and without seeing kind of what CPS has done, if anything. Right. Um, what I could do is order CPS records, send them to mediation, they can attempt to come up with some type of a plan. And or agreement that maybe either she comes back or the kids stay and they, they I don't know what they do at this point but they can talk about it because they're required to or they come up with a blind agreement that if in fact mom decides to stay there and it doesn't matter where the, the what the judge orders that we know what the, the long distance schedule is right sometimes people do that they do a blind long distance schedule that applies to whomever doesn't have custody um, but either way, I'm required to send them, and I can order um, CPS records to see if there's anything pending. Um, what about this, Your Honor? Um, mm -hmm. Girlfriend, yes, look at it. Yeah. So they live in the same home. Mm -hmm. um, even based on mom's representations, it appears that she's comfortable with the girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Given that they don't start school till September, couldn't the children just be returned until? We can have a follow-up hearing on the CPS records. I mean, um, we can. I guess the concern. I mean, that's still only, remains, but that's only though, a week away. What's that? If they stay here, um, school's already started. It has. One, two. I mean, we have basically 
two weeks before they start school there, if we were to let them stay there for now. Um, <coughs> I mean, I don't, and, and you're saying basically be supervised by, by girlfriend? Well, I mean, if, yeah, if they're all staying in the same home. Right. Um, Let me hear from mom on that. Just to, you know, he hasn't seen him since May. So. I understand. Let me hear from mom on that. Mom? What? What are your thoughts on um, the children visiting dad between now and when they start school in Washington? Um being supervised by Liz so that there's no concern that he's going to, I mean, I read her text, she would be not inclined to let anything happen to your children, just like she said she would be upset about anything happening to her child, um, If so she's not going to let anybody drink with the, drink with the child or children. Um, um, to be honest, Your Honor, I believe that I would feel more comfortable if Mr. Smith would come up here to Washington to visit the children. Um, and I would be fine with having one of my family members, um, or even his parents supervised, his parents live up here as well. Mm. He's got work. I know he's got work. Right. Um, what, when do you work? What's your schedule? Uh, Monday through Friday, and then... On call. Uh, if, I, if I may add, Your Honor, too, just it, even in her own motion, she admits that they were doing Friday to Monday up until the time they left. So. No, I know. But then there's this concerning it. couple of incidents <coughs> where. Um, I understand the um, How would they be transported if they were to come down here? Somebody would have to go get them, right? Uh, well, the 10 year old can fly. Yeah, but. There's a little one, so they would still have to be transported. So I almost wonder whether doing a weekend. What's that? I was talking to Dad about the, his ability to fly up and then back with them. And then up again, back. It's well, a couple of round trips. Since, since Mom left the jurisdiction, I mean, they could split. She is working. She's got a job up there in Washington, which also raises questions to how far in advance this was planned. But Mm -hmm. um, oh, believe me, I understand a lot of the questions. We'll get to the bottom of it. I'm just trying to make sure that the children are safe until yeah. I have the information. So while I, I understand your position, Dad, and it may all flush out that there's no concern at all, I just need to make sure that they're safe. Can you do a weekend? Um, can you do um, this coming weekend or the following weekend, long weekend? It's Labor Day weekend. Are you working? that weekend? Um, like where you go up and just spend the time with them up there or with your parents? Look, I'm just trying to do, a, it's a band-aid at this point. Mm -hmm. um, rather than going up, transporting them back, mm -hmm. transporting them back up, transporting I yourself I'm back. I call for that weekend, I believe. So how would you, if you're on call, how do you spend time with them if, they're, if you're always working? No, it's just that weekend. I, what about, a, the, goes, what about next weekend? It's a floating two months. Oh, okay. What about this coming weekend? Can you switch call? Uh, possibly. I mean, look, I'm trying to it's come Monday up with... Friday, but, uh, <coughs> it's Monday through Friday, but... It's Monday through Friday call? Well, no, no I work Monday through Friday. Right, know, you know. right, right, right. No, I totally get that. I'm just saying, what, so you're off of call this weekend? You don't have call this weekend, correct? I don't. I mean, it's only two days away, though, so that's the thing. That's Are you able to take any days off? Just trying to come up with he, Yeah, he just took a vacation. I mean, I'm kind of struggling myself with money wise. <coughs> I mean, oh, yeah. Already, it's like. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, I mean, here's the problem. What would it cost short term to get you up there? And I mean, I can even make mom pay for this um, because she left. But it needs to be booked ASAP either way, for either for this weekend or the next weekend. It's less costly for you to just go there and spend the time, right? Mm -hmm. Rather than transporting two kids, one adult, back and forth, four, you know, four trips back and forth. It's a lot. So I'm afraid it won't happen if it's co too costly. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so to me, it would make more sense just from a cost perspective and a ensuring that it happens perspective that you go up there and spend the time either this weekend or next weekend before they start in that school. I mean, other option, I mean, 
I just don't feel comfortable ordering them to just come back um, without having more information. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and look, if it's in their best interest for them to come back in the end, they'll come back. Um, they're resilient. They'll adjust. Um, if it's in their best interest to stay, then they're they're where they are, and that and we'll figure out a, a plan. But um, can, do you think you can do that? And I will order that. Mom, um, do you? What is your job right now? Um, I am working at the internship at Pierce County District Court as um, probation and resource navigator. Okay. So, do you have money that you can? I mean, look, I'm, I need him to be able to visit. So, what is the? Story? I do. I have very limited um, income, but I, if he wants to come up, I'm willing to pay half of his flight ticket. If he wants to come see them. Um, I've offered for him to come up and see them um, and told him he could. Uh, Father's Day weekend, I offered he could fly up and come see me, and he declined. All right, so. So, but I will pay for half of his flight to give him to come see his kids. I've never. I've left all communication open okay. with him. He knows where all my family is. So we have together 10 years. If we, He's well, welcome to come see them. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. If it doesn't work the next couple weekends, that you can always do it another one, right? If we're going to let them stay there for now, yeah. I can until probably, if, it, if I have a week or so in advance, I can possibly. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to say is, um, over the next, we're, I'm going to send them to mediation. I'm going to um, request the CPS records, see if they've done, opened any kind of investigation or done any kind of anything at this point. It might be too, too soon. I don't know. Um, I'll allow that in the next. 45 days or whatever that we're trying to accomplish our goal that dad can have every other weekend. It doesn't mean you're going to go every other weekend, but you can have every other weekend depending upon what you're able to do, okay? Commencing with, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Whenever you start it, right? So if you say, I can't go this weekend, I can't go next weekend, but I can go the following, then we'll start it from there, okay? Um, that way you at least can pick a weekend that you can go see them. If it's not that next weekend, and then you're going to have to um, let mom know. And mom, whatever weekend he says I'm coming, that's his weekend. So you're going to need to send... Absolutely fine. I can do that. You need to send her... Um, how do you communicate? Text? Yes. Send her a text message saying, this is the weekend, this is my itinerary. Um, it, if you want to... Um, she'll pay... Okay, so how do I do this? You're going to have to... She's going to have to pay to get you there. Okay. And, and, I, I don't know what the flights cost, so do you, I don't know. So this is the problem. I really want, I mean, I, I want you to pay his whole flight cost, but if it's too much for e either one of you right now, maybe half and half, and then if there's any child support obligation, I need FDFs. I don't have any information. Um, I can always offset it on child support. I can figure out a way to accomplish making sure that you're compensated. But if you would do, um, you're gonna have to get his flight there or, or back. One of the two. You're gonna. She's gonna have to pay for one of them, fifty percent of it. If you have to buy it and she reimburses you, or however you want to do it, and I'm just Probably trying to make it open. Looks up the prices and then. Send she it to her. Like yeah. Some, yep. But mom is price. required to pay for one half. Okay. Yep. Give me a give me a um, FMC referral and a return date, and we'll um, we'll deal with that, and I'll I'll deal with CPS records. And um, October twenty second at eleven a.m. And dad, like I said, you're gonna have every other weekend, and if you if. If you can do it, great. Um, if I need to see you sooner, or if I get information from CPS sooner, I mean, we'll, we'll, they keep us updated. We'll get like updates on the file. Um, I just, I'm just really concerned. Um, but we'll we'll figure it out. I just want to make sure you have contact. Um, 
I need FDFs filed by um, the next. Does everybody have financial disclosure forms? Talk to They're them. online, Mom. I need you to file a financial disclosure form by okay. um, by August thirtieth. Okay. Okay, because I may issue orders um, relating to uh, the cost of the flights once I see what everybody's finances are that may adjust. Okay. Okay. Because I don't know what Dad okay. makes. I don't know what Mom makes. I don't know what their expenses are. I know nothing. I, I make under a thousand a month. I know. You make what? I make under a thousand. Uh, I have my TNS, and I just this week got a raise, which will put me just under a thousand dollars a month. All right, that's that's not helpful. Okay, so and I and I know that Washington does have a child support order um, out, and it's pending, and it has contacted the state of Nevada since I am getting assistance. And they are dating back till 2010 uh, when we were separated. Sorry. That's, what, that's right. what they said. All right, they'll give us well, whatever they have. Okay, so so Dad's going to notify her whenever he can go via text, and that is his weekend. I don't know what date that is, but that's going to be his weekend. It's ordered, okay? So you need to make sure you keep track of your notifications. This is the weekend I'm coming, okay? Um, and then... If you can do next weekend, it would be great because it's a long weekend, right? I don't know if you have Monday off, but all right. And then return date, she gave you October 20, right? Oh, if I need to see you sooner, I can always notify you. Um, when I get CPS records, you'll be notified as to what we receive, so you can come look at them. Um, and for now, Mom, you temporarily are allowed to stay there until I dig into this a little more. Um, but there very well may be an order requiring you to come back or to send the children back, depending upon what I learn. And or if the trial goes forward and you do not prevail, then you, there are a couple of options. So either you stay and they come or you all come back or whatever. So it depends. Um, I'm going to let you go for today. They have an FMC referral. Yeah. Can I just add, um, or can we add to the order just that, uh, they maintain the FaceTime. FaceTime, yes. FaceTime continues like it has been uh, on a daily basis if you want to. I At least one call a day. I got a day that I was blocked when I was texting my daughter, so I don't know if she put me on block. Yeah, no blocking, unblock, and FaceTime at least once a day. I have to um, I have to let you go. I was going to say, um, and the parties will go to FMC and, and Mom can participate by phone, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. They'll be contacting you. All right. I'll let you go.